Main streets and squares in Minsk, the capital of Belarus, have been sealed off tonight after a state-run exit poll suggested the country's authoritarian leader, Alexander Lukashenko, had won the general election by a wide margin. He's been president for 26 years and has been battling a wave of discontent over his handling of the coronavirus pandemic, the economy and human rights. Sarah Rainsford has more details. Her report contains some flash photography. Belarus has never seen an election like this. A nation demanding change after 26 years of authoritarian rule. You can tell most are opposition voters by their wristbands. Those extraordinary scenes were mirrored at Belarusian embassies around the world. And from Moscow to London, voters had the same call. We do need a new president. We do need new ideas in the government. We do need new policies in every sphere of life. As he arrived to vote for himself, though, Alexander Lukashenko didn't look at all worried. This man has won every election by a landslide since 1994. Easy when you control the media and the vote count. And the man, once dubbed Europe's last dictator, was scathing about his female opponent. I don't consider that person my main rival. It's he who made the poor little thing my main rival. But she says quite honestly that she has no idea what she's doing. That's not how Svetlana Tikhanovskaya looked on the campaign trail. Just weeks ago, she was a stay-at-home mom. Then her husband was blocked from running for president and arrested. So Svetlana stepped in, and she's tapped into growing discontent with the man at the top. On election day, his security forces were taking no chances. These three pinned to the ground are Russian journalists. The internet's been blocked all day, too. Though that didn't stop this video getting out from a polling station. Officials insist she's not making off with any ballot papers. She just got stuck in a room. Svetlana Tikhanovskaya never expected to win at the ballot box, but she and her supporters have always vowed to defend their vote on the streets. And tonight, those protests have already begun. Sarah Rainsford, BBC News, Moscow.